Is Zane Smith headed to track house? On Monday, Bob Pockers posted his NASCAR Silly Season update, and most of the things that were in there were uh, pretty common knowledge already, right? Like, we know Harrison Burton's going back to the 21 car. We already know about front row. We know about Eric Almirola possibly retiring, and the Collard car still seem to be up in the air, but Ty Dillon's name keeps getting mentioned as a replacement in the 31 or the 16 if Almendinger were to step down. Daniel Hemrick's name keeps getting brought up there, still waiting on that Shock the World announcement. But when it got to the topic of Zane Smith, Bob mentioned something that hasn't at least been publicly floated yet, and it's that Zane Smith has had conversations with Travis Trackhouse about a possible partnership into the future. The problem is Trackhouse's two cars, two cup cars rather, are already spoken for. Ross Chastain just signed a contract extension this year, which while they didn't say how many years it is, Justin Marks did say that Ross Chastain will be gray in the beard by the time it's over, so you can assume that it's probably a five-ish year deal, if not longer, which is kind of rare right now in the Cup Series. And then on the Daniel Suarez side, he just signed a multi-year extension back in February, which means that he's definitely signed through the team until at least the end of 2025. Multi-year means two. If he was already on the last year's contract in 2023, then you add two more years onto it, 2024, 2025. You can see how we come up with that number. And that's just speculation. It could have been a three-year deal. could have been a four-year deal. Multi-year deal is anything basically over one. So that means that Trackhouse's two chartered cars are at least spoken for. Now, obviously, they have run an open car with uh, Shane Van Gisbergen in that number 91 car. It's not ideal, right? You don't get the same amount of prize money that you do if you have a chartered car, but you can still make it happen. And while economically maybe not feasible for the long term, we did see JTG do it as well with uh, Chris Busher's car for a while there, or one season rather, uh, before they shuttered it. So while possible, not ideal. Do I think they're going to do that for Zane Smith? Well, according to Bob, probably not, kind of what uh, Bob alluded to. And what he alluded to was the fact that apparently Trackhouse has had conversations with Zane Smith about signing with them and then them placing him either with a different Cup Series team or with an Xfinity team, probably bringing him up if they could land a third charter or something along those lines to make it feasible. So where could he end up in the Cup Series? It's not crazy. We've seen plenty of drivers get signed by teams before and then run a year at a different team. Casey Kane famously did it when he signed with Hendrick and then ran a year at Red Bull. Clint Boyer did it when he signed with SHR and then he ran a year at H. Scott Motorsport and absolutely hated his life when that happened. So we've seen these things play out before. And when it comes to the Cup Series, there's really two options that make the most sense on where they could place uh, Zane Smith at if he were to sign with Trackhouse. The first up is Colleg. Obviously, they have one, if not two, cars open. This is not even a rumor that has even popped up. I'm just thinking out loud here of possibilities, right? And obviously, the 31 or the 16 would be perfect. It seems like Colleg and Trackhouse have a pretty decent relationship, and we'll get to that in a second. You could maybe play into that here and put Zane over there for a while. They're both Chevy teams for now, and it, it makes a lot of sense. The other team that makes a lot of sense as well, would be Live Fast, the number 78 car. It was rumored uh, going into this year, at the end of last year, when Tyler Reddick uh, had signed with 2311 for what was supposed to be the 2024 season. People forget he was supposed to be um, in that eight car for one more year in 2023. They obviously signed Kyle Busch to be his replacement. They didn't have a place for Reddick to go. And before they could work out a deal, Richard was apparently planning on putting Tyler Reddick into that number 78 car at Livefast, which, again, probably would have hated his life if they had used Livefast cars and not RCR cars. So that is an option. Obviously, Livefast does appear to be open for play. Like, if you have money, you have a sponsor, you can probably get into that car. They have a charter, so they are guaranteed a starting spot. Maybe Trackhouse can work out a lease type of deal with him, or they can just straight up put Zane in that 78 car, and it's essentially just a third Trackhouse car that's just coming right out of their shop and going to the track as a live fast number 78 Chevy Camaro. Those are possibilities for the Cup Series. On the other hand, when we talk about the Xfinity Series, when I said Colleg and Trackhouse do seem to have a pretty good relationship, both of the Trackhouse drivers have made starts for Colleg this year in the Xfinity Series, and Trackhouse's owner, Justin Marks, has also made a start for them as well. So they do have a very good working relationship, and they could possibly place Zane Smith over there. Obviously, you don't need a charter for that, and you're going to have to want to find a sponsor for him, but I think Trackhouse has done a really good job of finding sponsors at a time where we see other teams like SHR struggle to find literally anybody to get on their car at times. So it does make sense to maybe put Zane over 
at Trackhouse in the Xfinity Series for a year. He does not want to go back to the Truck Series. Zane has already stated that he's not interested in racing the trucks again. He wants to be racing on Sunday. Maybe we can settle on Saturday if there's nothing for him to race on Sunday. Brad Keselowski has also been really high on Zane Smith as well. Uh, RFK is not in a position to add a third charter next year. Brad kind of talked about that at Playoff Media Day when he was like, charters are going for $40 million, so we will not be adding one at the moment. I think down the road they would love to add a charter and an extended team and a truck series team as well, but obviously Brad's main focus right now is getting his two cars up to a competitive level, and I would argue that they are at a very competitive level right now. So I don't think it's in the play for 2024, but Zane Smith is a guy that I feel like could eventually find his way to RFK if they can't figure out anything else or this track house thing falls apart. Another part of this track house deal is their development plan that they apparently are maybe signing with Shane Van Gisbergen. We haven't heard much about it in a little bit, which isn't odd, but it is kind of odd at the same time that it's gone completely quiet. And it seemed like that deal was going to be announced like days after Indianapolis, and it still hasn't been. So with SVG in the picture as well, they're going to have to find him a spot, likely in the trucks, Xfinity, and then select cup starts. How does that all fit together with Zane? I'm not sure. But Justin Marks had, has con did have conversations last year with Corey LaJoy about a third team they couldn't find a charter for him or they didn't want to pay for a charter at that point. So that fell apart. Maybe Zane Smith is just the 2023 version of Corey LaJoy. I'm not sure, but Zane would fit that track house mold in terms of like a good personality fit by uh, when you or when you think of it, at least. So Zane Smith, the track house, maybe it'll happen. It'll be interesting. I think it'd be a good career move for him if there's nothing else out there. So like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and threads at Break Hard Blog.